Hello people, uh, welcome to the first technical video of Destreza Nova. If you watch the introduction video you will see that Destreza Nova is the way I applied um, a lot of uh, concepts of different disciplines to Destreza. Okay, so today what we have is how to handle the rapier sword. If you saw, you know, a rapier sword have a lot of models, a lot of uh, particular styles and uh, it depends always in the context of time and, and space. My favorite one is the cap hilt, okay, very Spanish uh, type model. And I like uh, this particular model because the cap protects the, your hand, okay, it's a common sense invention. But also, if you see the treatise of Lorenz de Rada, it shows the vectors of how you can deflect the attacks to your body uh, using the cap. Okay. So, uh, according to the grip, okay, because inside the cap hilted sword there are a lot of models, the grip always, I say, it has to be short. Okay. Short, it means it shouldn't pass the palm of the hand or else it's difficult to move it around. You will see that there are some models that they have a really long grip. These are not good, particularly good for Destreza Nova or Verdadera Destreza. The length of the blade I recommend it to be for Destreza, Verdadera Destreza or Destreza Nova around 1 meter long or 40 inches. Yes, size matters, but longer doesn't necessarily mean better, okay? For example, last year, um, me and Kalum, we reached the finals of a tournament in Ottawa having blades of 36 inches compared with other people that they had 40, 41, 42. There is one blade known that it's the Hanoi 42 inches, that it's too flexible. For example, we don't allow that in Montreal or Masters, it has to it has to be um, a bit stiff, okay, but, but leaving some degree of flexibility, of course, for not to kill the, the partner. If you have the 42 inches blade of a rapier handway, you can cut it, for example, to, to go to a good spatrol, okay, so you don't have to throw it to the garbage. The weight I recommend around one kilo more than 1.2 kilos it's too heavy to handle it and less than one kilo it's unhistorical and i don't recommend it for for sparring unless if you're using it for for doing uh, drills or so doing some technique so the way we hold the sword uh, you will sit in different treatises you can see with one finger two fingers no fingers, flying swords, you can see many ways. My favorite way of doing it, it's um, like uh, Lorenz Trada says and many others, it's with two fingers uh, passing it through the cross uh, and embracing the ricasso with the thumb. Okay? This will give, um, how to say, a good balance to control the blade and play with point of your sword. Okay. Um, the grip changes a bit during the combat, it means that uh, the last fingers of the hand should open a bit or release the strength when you're delivering the cuts and reverses, as we will see it in the videos, and the same way when we do a thrust I always recommend to release the top fingers so we can play with the tip while doing the thrust and we put more strength with the bottom fingers so we hold the sword and doesn't fall. As you should know, Verdadera Destreza is the most complex martial art ever and there are many concepts in it. Okay? One of the first things to explain you guys is uh, the internal and external side of the body. You saw the, the drawing. Uh, there is the internal side that is from the sword to the left side of the body in case that we are right-handed and the external side is from the right hand to the back. 
Okay. We talk a lot of times about the angles of the sword. It goes with the sword hand and we can distinguish obtuse angle, straight angle and acute angle. Okay. Regarding the hand position with the sword. Okay, we have um, a lot of positions and in the Spanish books, the treatises, they use the position of the fingernails to, the, to describe how the hand, how we position our hand. Okay? They match the positions of Camilo Grippa, an Italian fencer. The first one that I want to talk, it's the one with nails out. Okay? So it's having the sword with the lower kion or front kion um, looking at the sky or at 12 o'clock. Uh, this is uh, nails out. Then we have the second position, it's uh, nails down with the kion looking to the external side or 3 o'clock. Nails down. Then uh, natural position, it's with nails in uh, towards the internal side with the kion look, front kion looking down. And then we have nails up, okay, with uh, lower kion or front kion looking at the internal side or nine o'clock. Okay, so again we have nails out, nails down, nails in, nails up. Um, in between the nails in, okay, there are two positions of the sword diagonally that we use a lot. They call it participios, okay? It's uh, mid nails up, okay? Going from the nails in to up in the middle and then nails mid lanes down, okay? We use these positions when we have the sword of uh, the opponent in the inside part, we place our hand in the mid nails up. When we have the sword of the enemy in the external side, we use the mid nails down. So that's all for the first video of concepts in the Stretha Nova. Um, thank you in advance for all your comments, personal attacks, insults, and, and so on. I will wait you for the, in the next video with the body position. Thank you.